Alan, thanks for joining me here at Slap News. We are here in Vegas. We want to get to know more about you and, you know, let's get right back to the basics and what really got you involved in Power Slap in the first place. Um, I mean, it's real simple. I always wanted to, I guess you have the dream as an MMA fighter to be in the UFC. Uh, COVID kind of killed a little bit of that momentum for me. Uh, I saw this opportunity from Dana through Twitter. I believe it was the original place I saw it and I thought, what the hell? You know, he's looking for fighters. I might as well apply. And that, that basically sums it all up. I mean, it's been six months since the road to the series, or the road to the title started. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, fast forward now, Power Slap 3. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, seeing the growth in the trajectory, the numbers, the amount of strikers and athletes getting involved with it, does it excite you for the future of the sport? I'm freaking pumped. I, I mean, some of these new athletes that are coming in, I, like, I'm, I'm not intimidated. I'm truly excited because they look like absolute athletes, you know, um, just through and through, like, I think we got a D1 uh, football player coming in. He's freaking huge. Like, just looks like an absolute warrior. You know, uh, we have some international fighters coming in and things like that. As the sport continues to grow, um, I I think the neat thing is you will have to push yourself and you will have to be – creative moving forwards in order to be um on on that top yeah. i mean we are seeing obviously the strategy you know continue to evolve mm-hmm. um you know trying to catch guys when they're not ready whether whether they're not fully clinched you know changing up the you know the the speed of your slaps like you did with Vern kathy right. between slap one and slap two right do you see that further progressing and, and then if you do do you see more on the offense or the defense oh man it's really tough to say i i would say that the uh the offense is probably the easiest place to notice the change, at least, um, and and so where the a lot of the tactics will lie, and I think that that's just going to be like understanding and reading your opponent, like similar to uh, an MMA match. Like, okay, this is where the breathing's at. This is uh, like where they're about to clinch. Like, how can I speed it up? Like, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this about Austin's match. Like when he did deliver that slap, uh, like that wind up was so slow, and I think what was incredible about it for for that slap was that he did turn the speed up at. And it, it prevented Brian uh, from being able to clinch his jaw at the right time. So I think, like, just understanding your opponent, reading them, changing the speed of, of just the wind-up to the slap, you know, like things like that, that I think it's it's really key. Yeah. Do you think it's a fine balance between clinching too hard mm-hmm. and not clinching? Because we've seen guys like Isaiah Quiones, mm-hmm. um, you know, Russell Rivera, mm-hmm. potentially, you know, clinching too hard. Right. Jewel Scott, even, against Robert Trujillo, potentially clinching too hard, right. which may cause or lead to some of those those additional knockouts. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, a big part of it is like doing it right before you get hit, because I think if you're if you're too involved, you're involving your neck muscles. And I think that rigidity like causes a lot of the force to be retained. And, you know, you get this motion, the brain bounces around. It can cause a knockout. No problem. So. Yeah. I mean, we've seen obviously the knockouts be reduced from power stop one to, to power stop number two. Yeah. Um, you know, we obviously we see that, you know, being a continual trend. Um, you know, you, you know, you've been in rules meetings, you know, multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel confident that they're going to be able to get a lot of these fouls and these strikes out? Or do you still see some of these strikers just being sloppy and it's going to continue for quite a while? Um, I'll, I'll say this. I think moving forwards, if there are fouls, it's because either number one, they didn't do the training that they needed to do. Or number two, it's because they're being intentional about it. And, and that's a strategy in and of itself because, uh, I mean, that you risk being disqualified. But if, if you don't knock them out, then, you know, that can potentially give you the advantage. So. Absolutely. I mean, you're sitting there, you know, the top of the light heavyweight division. We've seen some new entries, obviously, Austin coming down, uh, Wolverine coming down. Like, now that's really proven to be one of the deepest classes in Power Slap, mm-hmm. um, a division with, you know, a top five that's second to none. Right. Um, you know, do you see that continue to be a trend with that 205 being a nice fine balance of both, you know, speed, but also mix of power as well? Do you see that kind of being the, you know, quote unquote, you know, killer division? That's going to seem to produce a lot of knockouts and, and, and a lot of excitement for the for the fans. Uh, I do believe that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you got the super heavyweights. There's a lot of power behind that, but there is likely a lack of speed there. Even the same with the heavyweights is similar situation. Those guys are able to eat those slaps a lot more. Mm-hmm. Lower uh, lower weight guys, they're building a lot of speed, so there's potential for a knockout there. But I don't think a lot of the guys have the form or the power behind their slaps. Just high speed. Um, so kind of similar to MMA, I think that light heavyweight really will be the the speed and power kind of like just middle ground. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, more on a personal note, like what is that drive, that termination, that motivation that you have that w- to want to continue in this sport? Like why like, do, you, do you absolutely just love it or like what is fueling you to continue on here? I mean, this is an incredible opportunity. Like, uh, sure, when I first stepped in, I wasn't exactly – certain what was going to happen i thought i'd get my foot in the fo- door with the ufc but this has become an incredible opportunity and i 
I have a fuel and a fire to be a fighter, right? Like in whatever capacity that can be. And this is a professional sports continuing to grow. The opportunity to fight international fighters um, on a global scale, you know, with a global audience. Like that, to me, that's a huge deal to be able to represent like where I come from, uh, the United States, Texas, this, that, and the other. And then also just the ability to compete. Yeah. Like, are you proud now to call yourself a professional striker? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Awesome, man. I know, I know, I know you wear the, uh, you know, the flag on your heart. Um, you know, you're very proud of where you come from, obviously coming from Texas, you know, representing the United States. That opportunity comes to go international. You're the first one that's going to sign up. Hell yeah. I've been talking to Frank about it all the time. I'm like, <laughs> hey, choose me, man. Choose me. I'm right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Okay, we're going to do a couple, couple more questions, though. Outside of the sport of power slap, what are some of the things that you're doing to keep busy? Well, um, you know, I, I mostly like, uh, as far as like my wife and I go, we, we love to go hiking. So that's kind of the thing that we do. And, um, we do like outdoor yoga and stuff like that together. So that's, that's what we do to maintain busyness outside of working out, obviously, and, in uh, you know, grinding it out basically. Awesome. Any fishing, hunting, ATVing, any of that stuff, any outdoor stuff? Uh, you know, t- from time to time, I don't have a lot of time to invest in that right now, but, um, when the opportunity arises, I always take the opportunity to do that. So. I know you're a smart guy. You talked about some investing opportunities. Obviously, you know, you're getting some uh, additional paychecks here through Power Slap. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I think, did we talk about real estate before? Is that something you're looking to get into or are you currently yeah. into? Uh, well, yeah, I've been, I've been working it, um, uh, trying to figure out exactly what I need to do to make those smart investments. And so, you know, I don't know, like the first buy would hopefully be something like a fourplex, um, you know, kind of, uh, renovating it and then, you know, rent to get out. So I think that would be a great investment. Yeah, just a mod, you know, a modest fourplex, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing yeah. too shabby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Working the 401k, got the RSPs in line. You're working all it. that stuff too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't think there's too many strikers thinking about that, but if you certainly are and you're investing your, you know, your paychecks wisely, it's definitely going to help you in the long run. Because, uh, you know, we, d- we really don't know. I mean, um, looking at some of the history of this, we've seen that, uh, you know, the average career length in power, sl- you know, in, in slap fighting was, you know, around two fights. Right. So obviously, you know, you're, you're, you're hitting past that now. So, yes, sir. so we don't really know the longevity, how long athletes are going to be in here. So being smart and being financially wise with your money is definitely important. Okay. But, uh, you know, other than that, like you're into comic books, you know, video games, anything fun, exciting that our viewers might not know about you. Oh geez, um, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a little bit of a nerd, so I, I definitely enjoy the uh, the classic like superhero movies, and um, you know, I, I really enjoy the John Wick series, and, and anything assassin related, obviously, is is a draw for me. So I don't I don't know. There's a little bit of a duality, but but yeah, I don't. I, I guess that's kind of interesting. Outside of that, I mean, I'm a martial artist. This is what I do. This is what I love. Yeah, so. yeah. What about crypto, NFT, anything like that? <laughs> Um, I, I don't have a big portfolio yet, but I, I'm working on it. Okay. So. Work on the Bitcoin. Yes, sir. Ethereum. What's, what's your favorite? Uh, I definitely love Bitcoin just because it's, uh, it's kind of like this. It's, it's something that was brand new. It started up, it fluctuates, but it seems to be the standard basically. So awesome, man. I appreciate you joining me, man. Corey Sparkers here for slap news with Alan Klingbile. Woo!